Good morning, sense. Good morning. It's a beautiful day anyhow, no matter what happens. The day is beautiful. This is the day that the Lord has made. So whether the world is fallen and broken or not, the Lord is good at all times. He is good. He is perfect. He loves you. He, he, he's been waiting. He's been waiting. You know, he doesn't live in time. But we have to check the time and come on time. But he's been waiting since eternity. Can you imagine? That's how much he loves us. That is how much he loves us. So let us show him some love as well. Let us show him some love. Let us be like, you know, children this morning, taking breakfast to mama in bed, all, you know, all excited. So, all right. Today, we want to use Romans chapter 15, verse 13 and 14 for our declaration and proclamation and prayer. We have to declare to the north, to the south, to the east and the west that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is the word of God and the word works. The word works. So we have to know it and live by it. Romans chapter 15. Romans 15. Verses 13 and 14. And it says, now let's just focus our heart, our heart to the word of God. It is the word of God that is the sword of the spirit. Don't play around the word of God. It is, it is that word that saves you. It is that word that protects you. It is that word that elevates you is is the word that builds you up without the word you are just empty all right okay let's read romans 15 verse 18 and 14 now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. So you receive the word, the word changes you, and as the word is in you and has changed you, you take the same word and give to others. That's why it's a giving thing. God is a giver. We, his children, must be giver on any level, on in any situation. Filled with all knowledge, because it is God's knowledge, and able also to admonish one another. So we, we help each other to grow. I want us to proclaim, I want us to proclaim, I will abound in hope according to Romans 15 verse 18 and 14. I will, that's our proclamation, I will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in all of God's divine promises for my life by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We have to declare it, we have to proclaim it, because we possess what we confess. You, the word must be made flesh. The more you proclaim it, the more you declare it, the more you confess it, the more it becomes flesh in you. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
So that word must be real in your life so that you can use it, like in verse 14, to help others to grow. I possess what I confess, and I claim it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Shall we pray? Father, we come to you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, this night, whenever your children will be listening to you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your living word. Thank you for your life-transforming word. Thank you for your life-giving word. Thank you that by your word, we are made new. Jesus makes all things new. Whatever has been broken, whatever is in disorder, Lord, we command them by the power of your word that we are proclaiming and confessing that they will come into alignment in the matchless name of Jesus. And because of your word, we will abound in hope. We will remain in hope. We will focus on Jesus. We will overflow with confidence in all of God's divine promises for our lives. And those promises must be made manifest as we declare, as we proclaim, as we confess. Thank you, Father, for giving us your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, the word of God for coming to earth and being like one of us to save us. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you are still here to help us, to, to interpret these words to us. Thank you that you are the life giver, the revelator, the comforter, the, our counselor, our teacher. We welcome your presence, Lord. You are worthy, and we can only be worthy in you. So, Lord, we ask that you cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord Jesus, with your precious blood. Let your blood speak better things over us than that of Abel, that of the world. No matter how much our friends think good of us, it's never, ever good enough. Because you know us through and through. And so we say thank you. Let your blood that you shed for us make us worthy in your presence this morning, at this hour. Let your blood speak redemption over us. When the enemy comes with accusation and says guilty, 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 let your blood speak not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. Thank you, Father, for releasing your word of healing to us this morning of protection to us this morning, of comfort to us this morning, of hope and confidence in you. And thank you, Word of God, for making us new this morning. Come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. We don't just want to confess you with our lips. We want to have you in our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus. Rest in us, be in us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Work through us, do your work through us because all that our hands can do, you do them. Do a work through us by the power of your Holy Spirit so that all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration will be to you and you alone. And we shall walk in the benefit of receiving from God and living through God and, and living in God. Receive glory. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will abound in hope and overflow with confidence. Amen. So with that... With that confession, let us go to our reading. Remember, since last week, we've been talking about our hope that can never disappoint. And we have a word 
that is rock solid. It does not change. Our reading of today will be taken from the psalm. Psalm 102. 102. I will read from verse 12 to verse 22. Psalm 102, verse 12 to 22. I read from the New King James Version, but like I always say, it doesn't matter what version you read from. It's the same word. The power is in the word. Remember, the letter kills. If it's just the word that you cram in your head, it, it's no use. The letter kills but the spirit gives life. So once you have a spiritual understanding, that, that, that hope, that confidence in the word of God, and it translates, Jesus says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So it's not just cramming things. You, if, you, if you cram after you understand, once you understand the cramming is even easier because it comes from inside. You don't have to try too hard to, to remember because the Holy Spirit has, give, has given you the understanding already. So it flows. All right? But let us understand the word of God is powerful because it is God. Right. Verse 12, Psalm 102. But you, O Lord, shall endure how long? For two days? For 10 years, for a thousand years, no, forever. The Lord endures forever. It doesn't matter what is happening in this world. But you, O oh Lord, shall endure forever and the remembrance of your name to all generations. I don't care who refuses you in this generation. In the next generation, you still give somebody a chance to remember you because your word endures forever. And he is God. All right? So, verse 13. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. Put your name in it. You will arise and have mercy on Victoria. For the time, Marco Sarata, the time to favor her Yes, Lord, the set time has come. Today, Marco Sarat, today is your day of favor. You just claim it. You see, you might be looking for one thing, and you might be looking amiss. While God knows exactly what you need. So say, Lord, today, today is my day. Today is the day you are going to remember me because the remembrance of your name is to all generations. Today, you will arise, Lord, and remember me. Remember my affliction. We, we read that last week in, in, uh, in the book of Lamentations. Remember my situation, Lord, because sometimes God is just waiting for us to ask we have made our angels redundant because we don't empower the right supernatural. Declare, Father, today, arise. Arise and have mercy on me. I need your mercy. Yes, we've all sinned and fallen short of your glory, but you are a merciful God. That's why you died for me. Have mercy on me today. Remember my affliction today. Arise, O Lord, and have mercy on Zion. Have mercy on your children, Lord. For the time to favor her, for the time to favor them, male and female. Yes, today is that set time. The clock has turned to Midnight, it is the time of redemption. 
the time the, the clock is on point the set time the alarm was set to midnight from one day going into another and at the gong goes you declare father this is my time the time that was set in heaven before i came that you should favor me yes you declare it you proclaim it you receive it yes lord the set time has come that is a word for somebody that is a word for me i don't know about you i've received it in jesus name verse 14 for your servants take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust talking about jerusalem it's it's like we love jerusalem they that pray for the peace of jerusalem will have peace that's what it talks about the stones and the dust so wherever you are say lord i care for what you care for i love what you love so lord remember me today and have mercy on me favor me today because the set time has come verse 15 so the nation shall fear the name of the lord and all the kings of the earth your glory when people who have more than you start to see what god is doing in your life they will wonder they will come to your god with reverence that's that's the word fear there they will reverence the name of your god nation shall fear the name of the lord and all kings that means high and lifted up those who looked down on you those who who thought you were you know playing games when they see the things that god will do in your life they will come and reverence your god and they will behold his glory because god will allow his glory to shine on you like he allowed it to shine on moses somebody say amen, amen. for the lord shall build up zion he shall appear in his glory let god do a work in your life just surrender just receive him and say lord i don't even know where to turn next but i agree with you I have faith in you. I have hope in you. And I declare that hope. I have confidence in what you are going to do in my life. Whether I understand it with my human brain or not. I have hope and I overflow with confidence in your love for me. In your perfect plan for me. I'm overflowing with confidence. This is not what I planned, just flow with me. Normally I just read to the end, just flow with me. Receive, receive because God is talking to you. The Lord, verse 16, the Lord shall build up Zion. The Lord will repay my life. The Lord will repay every broken thing in my life. The Lord will build me up. Beyond my imagination so that people will look at me and they, they they can't but say that is not victoria and they will give god his due glory because you have surrendered to the will of your heavenly father he will build you up in such a way even you will not recognize yourself and i say amen to that mm -hmm. he shall appear in his glory his glory must shine he, he created this world for us not for himself and the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof 
and the heavens, even the highest heaven, belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the children of men. And the earth is his, and he has given the earth to us. Let us break our religious mentality and start to think like kings and priests and children of the Most High God. Let him appear in his glory over you. Let his glory shine on you. Because he is abundant in all he does. We just were proclaiming the overflowing with confidence. Last week we talked a lot about abundance. You are worthy. Remember, you are worthy. So what we are talking about is not far-fetched. The moment you start to, to understand it and receive it in your spirit, let the Holy Spirit do his work in you. Verse 17, he shall regard the prayer of the destitute and shall not despise their prayer. You've been praying for years. You didn't see results. Now you've been listening to proper teaching. So your life has to change accordingly. He will now start to regard your prayer because you are releasing his word. You are speaking what he's... Now you know why you are praying. Now you know what you are praying. God's perfect will for you in his word, according to his word. You cannot bring his word to him for him to say, mm, I don't know. No, he said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word can never pass away. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. So let the word of God be made flesh in you. Let, let this word be accomplished in your life. Let this word become what it was sent to be in your life. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute. You have been crying. You have been throwing tantrums. If that wasn't prayer, you were just being emotional. Now sit up like Queen Esther. Dress up and enter his presence boldly to receive favor from the king. You were destitute yesterday, but now you know you are talking to your daddy. A daddy that loves you to bits. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. There's nothing he has not already done for you. So he shall regard your prayer. He shall not despise your prayer anymore. Because now you, you, you know your identity. I'm going to speak with my daddy. It's not about throwing yourself on the ground and, and, and behaving like a two-year-old. You pray consciously. You bring his word to him and say, Daddy, you said so. That when I'm 18, you do this. They said time has come. Daddy, I've been waiting. You said when I'm 21, you'll do this. The set time has come. He said it. He's not going to turn away. He's not man that he should lie. Don't treat God like a human being. Don't even treat him like yourself. You don't even love yourself. He loves you. You don't even, without him, you don't even know what love means. Verse 18. This will be written, the thing that God is going to do in your life will be written for the generation to come, that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. He's going to do, oh, he's going to show up and show off in your life that you will make history. You doubt it, doubt it if you like. I claim it. My life has to be a living testimony. When I'm gone, people have to talk about me. What God did for me, not what I did. 
See what God did in that woman's life. You, you read about all this uh, uh, revival that went on in America, you know, the, the black man that God used and, and uh, called the uh, Azusa Street Revival. God used that to bring black and white together. When nobody, he couldn't even sit in the same class. He had to sit outside in those days. Come on, let God do something that your name will be remembered for his sake, for his glory. You can be, uh, last week I said you can build plans, you can, you can feed millions. As long as you didn't do it in the name of Jesus, it's not written. You did not give him the glory. Let him take the glory so that you can walk in the benefit. Are people yet to be created, people yet unborn, will go on and praise God, like we are talking about the Azusa Street and other revivals. Let him use you to do something wonderful, something miraculous, something uh, supernatural, something excellent, something God, something beyond your ability, because it's a God thing. You couldn't do it. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary, verse 19, from heaven, the Lord viewed the earth. He's waiting. Is somebody ever going to ask me to give them the nations? I spoke it in Psalm 2 through my son, David. Is, is there anybody that is willing to open their mouth to declare, to speak something and say, Lord, give me some nations to bless. Fill my life with your goodness. Make me a blessing unto many. He looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven, the Lord viewed the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner. Are you going through tough times? This is the set time to speak. Don't despair anymore. He's waiting for you to pray his word, not to complain and throw tantrums. Pray with understanding. He has already given you the foundation. He's not even saying, think of what to say. No, he says, I've written it down, say it. Say it. I've already given you the words. Speak it back to me. Verse 20, to hear, he's waiting to hear the groaning of the prisoner. So to release those appointed to death. He's waiting. He's waiting. He wants to release you from that prison. Oh, somebody share this word. Share this word. He is looking to hear the groaning. When you start to groan, that means that thing is so beyond you that you can't speak again. You all your friends have tried and they have given up. You have no helper. You don't know where to go again. Unfortunately, you didn't know to take it to the Lord beforehand. So now everything is broken and spoiled. You sit down. And then from deep within you, you start to groan. God, if you don't help me out of here, I have no more helper. I don't have another helper. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, help me. See, he's waiting. 
to hear the groaning of the prisoner. Somebody that Satan has bound, somebody that the world has, has crushed, whether it's physical prison or mental prison or financial prison or whatever prison, there is something in your life, there is something in my life that is shortchanging us and we must break out. We must come out of this prison from this small place, this enclosure. We must come out by the power of the living Jesus. He's waiting to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to release those appointed to death. Verse 21, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When he has done what your father could not do, what your mother could not do, what your husband could not do, what your wife could not do, what your best friend could not do, what the society could not do, what the government could not do, what no human being could do. When he has done it, because he's waiting for you to speak it, that's the time when you are liberated. You start to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his prayers in Jerusalem. So you start to tell people, come and see what the Lord has done. I was crying for years and in a split second, the Lord came through for me at the 99th hour. At the, at the moment that I thought this was over, I had no helper. And so I reached out to God and said, God, if you are there, if what I'm hearing is true about you, help me out of this confinement. And he came through. And now you are dancing. Now you are screaming. Now you are jumping. Now because it's good news, you cannot hide it. You, say, you tell people, come and see. He has done it. I almost lost hope. Actually, I lost hope. But he told me in the proclamation in Romans 15 today that I will abound in hope and overflow with confidence. And so I picked up hope. And I started having confidence in him again. And he came through for me. So you tell people and you declare his name and you sing his praise. Verse 22. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. So you declare his glory in the assembly of the saints. Like the woman at the, at, the, at the well, she did not know what she was doing. She was hiding around, sneaking around. Her, her life was a mess until she met Jesus. And then she went out proclaiming. The woman that was shy, that was you know, destitute, that was hiding from people, now she was proclaiming. Come and see, I met the Messiah. It's good news. You cannot help but tell it. And may this be your portion today in the name of Jesus. Amen. To so speak the word of God, pray the word of God. So finally, we've come to the title of our message, and that's all it is. Speaking is receiving. If you don't speak what he says, if you are just talking about what you think, you will be praying amiss. He did not want you to pray amiss. That's why he said, when this time comes, say such and such. When you are in such a, a situation, say such and such. Say to the mountain, speak to the mountain. So that is our title of today. Speaking is receiving. I 
possess what I confess. I possess, I receive. Whatever I proclaim will come to me. I receive what I confess. So, let's carry on. Just to seal that topic, the benefits of serving the Lord, the benefits of knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus is not wishful thinking. It's not wishful thinking. It is a conscious and willful participation and interaction with the divine nature. It's not, oh, I wish God could help me today. I no, 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 no. God, is, God has been willing since eternity to help you. That's why he created you and sent you here to represent him. So how will he get the glory if you don't become what he sent you to become? It's when you become what he sent you to become that people will see the extraordinary in you and give him the glory. So he's waiting for you to speak what he speaks so that he can receive the glory and you're walking in the benefit. So it's not knowing Jesus, serving Jesus, walking with Jesus. It's not wishful thinking. Don't think it. Do it. Participate in the divine nature. He has put down his word. Use his word. It's a relationship. He gives, you take. He gives, you take. And as you take, you pour it to, to the people around you. My cup overflows. What is that overflow for? I'm overflowing with confidence. I'm, I'm, I'm overflowing with wealth. I am overflowing with health. I'm overflowing in every direction in my life so that the people around me can be blessed with that blessing. Learn to participate. Don't stop mourning. Yes, we have afflictions. But say, Lord, remember my affliction. Father, remember my affliction. And so when the day comes, because like today, the Spirit will, will make it rise in you. And you say, Father, today is that day. The set time has come. Today is my day that you have already ordained to favor me. Do, do even the one I did not expect so that I know it's you and you will receive the glory. And when people ask me, I'll be confident to say, Jesus did it. I didn't do that. I won't be Nebuchadnezzar and say, look what I've done. No, 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 no. He said that until he was re reduced to an animal. And then he realized, oh, uh -huh. as a matter of fact, I didn't do it. And he gave glory to God, and God restored him. So pray for your friends and family who think they are doing what they are doing, that God will have mercy on them, so that they won't be like Nebuchadnezzar and be reduced to an animal before they realize that God in heaven is the God of the whole earth, and he will rule over all, whether human beings like it or not. He has set his throne in heaven and he rules over all. So we have an active part to play in our spiritual growth and in our walk with Jesus. Don't just sit down and say, uh, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will, will be. Is that what God sent you to declare on his behalf? Lord, show me, what did you send me here to do? How am I supposed to represent you so that you receive the glory and I can enjoy the benefits? Ask him. At salvation, Jesus paid the price for your soul. I asked you last week, so is your breakfast more expensive than your soul? That you think Jesus cannot pay for your breakfast? 
when he paid for the redemption of your soul from the pit of hell? Or you think they are two different things? I gave you the example of, of the feeding of the thousands. Five loaves fed all those 5,000 men plus women and children. So now you are still doubting that God cannot give you your breakfast. Jesus paid the price for your soul. He laid the foundation for your life in the kingdom of heaven by so doing. So build on that foundation. Participate. Take an active part in your Christian walk and spiritual growth. Your father and your mother, for those of us who were born in the Christian homes, Papa and Mama took you to church as a baby. That was your foundation laid. Don't grow up and say, oh, that was my Mama and Papa. Now, now I'm grown up. I can think for myself. So that's not me. The foundation has been laid for you. Build on it. Decide to do what is right. That's all God is asking for. Brethren, think of these things. What is right, what is holy, what is trustworthy, what is perfect. Just think... Choose to do right. Nobody, nobody will say you will, you will uh, uh, do it right at all times. But fo focus on doing right. Make up your mind to live a right kind of life. Not any kind of life. That's the difference. Some people just live from day to day. No, no, no target, no focus, nothing. But when you have made up your mind to live right, I always say it, even if your footsteps go wrong, the Holy Spirit will redirect you when your heart is right, when you have made up your mind to live right. The Holy Spirit will help you do it. It is a God thing. So it's not easy to do it by yourself. God God needs you. God wants you to rely on him. Don't just sing, I surrender all. And then you say, okay, Jesus, when I sang, I surrender all, I just meant I surrender some. I didn't mean what I sang. I just sang it because it's a church song. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to surrender all. Give him the whole package. Let him work on it and return it to you multiple folds. That way his name is glorified and you enjoy the benefit. You gave him five fish and he turned it in, into a dinner that fed thousands. Give it to him. You've not been able to do anything with it ever since. So why are you still holding on to it? Let it go. You want to grow. So you plant the seed that you have with the hope, yeah? Hope and confidence when I plant this seed, like a corn, it will grow and I will get maybe two or three bunches of corn, then I have more. You see, that's this, the same thing. But we have one, one corn that we cannot eat and be satisfied, and we are just holding on to it. Plant it. Let it grow and, and bring multitude. Plant it in Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to him. That seed has to fall down and die first and germinate, and then grow, and then you wait 
for the harvest season. That's why you say, Lord, the set time has come now. I've planted, I've planted, I've planted. Now is harvest time. For your glory, I receive that harvest because I gave you my last seed. I receive the abundance, abundant harvest because I trusted you, I had hope in you, I had confidence in you, and I gave you my last seed. Let your heart speak to you. Just Think of doing it right according to God's word. Not what you feel like doing, but what is right. Trust me, Jesus didn't feel like hanging on that cross. Jesus didn't feel like being battered and mocked. But he did it because it was right for you and I, not even for himself. He did what was right. Remember at Gethsemane, he saw... The agony. And he said, Daddy, <laughs> did we not have plan B on this subject? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that was the flesh talking. Not my will, but your will. I'll do what is right. I'll do as it is written. That the Messiah, the Savior, must die for the subjects. I'll do what is right. Not what I feel like doing. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us to do what is right. This is why we must know the truth. If Jesus didn't know that it was written, that the Messiah had to die for the whole world, he, would, he, he, he had every right to say, ah, <laughs> this thing is too much for me, I, I can't carry the acid. Look at the people I just fed. Look at the people I just healed. They have turned against me. But he did what was right. May we learn by the power of the Holy Spirit to do what is right. Because we, that's why his name is above all names. I don't care, you cannot stand next to Jesus. He's above all. He did the ultimate. Nobody comes close. He did what your father could not do, your mother could not do, no human being could do. Jesus did it because he's God. But he had to do it as a human being so that Satan will be shut up forever. That's why at the mention of the name of Jesus, in the highest heaven, all angels bow. In the second heaven, uh, all demons bow. In the satanic uh, uh, realm, uh, they all bow. You know, he's the prince of the air. You have to see this spiritually the way it is now to change. Here on earth, we all bow, whether you like it or not. You cannot give yourself oxygen to breathe. It's provided free of charge by God. And then the demons that are bound in hell, they still bow. That's why they scream when you say, in the name of Jesus, get out. No, 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 no. She gave me access. Out. Now I take that access away from you. Out. She's not your property. She's been bought and paid for by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once you say that, they have no, they can't argue it because they know, oh, if you're talking about Jesus, I, I agree with that one. I'll leave. So they leave and they roam around. So that person, when demon leaves you, go fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit. Because they'll roam around. They need a vessel to dwell in. If they come back and check on you, and that place is empty, they'll go and say, Daddy, come. Uncle, come. Brother, come. That place I left is still empty. Let's go occupy so that it, it won't just be me next time. Before they cast us out, it will, it, you know, it will be an army that they will have to cast out. That is why we must live right. Live right. Put your life in the hands of the Holy Spirit. You don't understand it all. I don't understand it all. Let God do it because he knows it all. 
to every lying spirit that is telling you, I can do it. I curse that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I curse it. You cannot live in error. If you live right, then you can live in error. If you have given your life to God, then he is your director. He will lead you in the path of righteousness, the right part. So you can't walk in error. Even if you make a mistake in the flesh, because you have surrendered all to him, he will correct that. That's why God says, and their sins I remember no more. He chooses to forget once you have said, Lord, my life is yours. So now he manages your life. He helps you because you've made up your mind to honor him. We must know the truth. Jesus told the Sadducees in Matthew twenty-two twenty-nine. 29, he says, you are mistaken. You are walking in error because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God. People that think they know what they are doing on their own, they don't know what they are doing. Either you are for Jesus or you are under the power and control of the evil one. There's no third party. Don't say, oh, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in Satan. You are a liar. You are a liar. Somebody share this word. Let people hear it. There are only two parties to this game. One side is playing against the other. So you have to choose on one side. There's, there are no spectators in this game. No one sitting on the bench. So you have to decide. I am on the right or I am on the left. Make up your mind. We can read that Matthew if you like. Matthew 22. Verse 29. Like I said, this was the uh, situation where the Sadducees brought, uh, or, you know, they, they came to, to question Jesus because they, de they don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. And then they, were, they brought this story of one woman who married, uh, 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 married this man. The person died, and in, according to the law, the, the brother of that man married her. And so she ended up, this is a very, like, outstretched story. She ended up marrying seven brothers and had no child for any. They all died. So the Sadducees who don't believe in the resurrection of the dead say, okay, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be? Jesus said, you guys are in error. <laughs> you don't know the scriptures. So it's, then Jesus answered and said to them, you are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. You are treating God like your tiny brain. He's not like you. Because in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. You know, like when you see angels, they are neutral. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. So start to live because you are a child of God. Whether you die and leave this world, you are not dead. You are still alive. Abraham is still alive today. God is the God of the living. Don't deceive yourself. Oh, I'm going through this in this world. So now later I'll die and all this will end. No, sir, it's not ending. Find Jesus now. Knowing Jesus is not wishful thinking. You have to know him. You have to agree with him because he is the author of life. Don't walk in error any longer because you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. 
God can do anything. That's why he came. People are still confused because they see God as, they, as themselves. Oh, how can God come as a human being? Did he not say he created you in his image? Did he not create you? Can he not become anything he wants to become? He sends angels like human beings. People see physical angels. So that one God can do. But he cannot release his word and say, go and become a child in the womb of Mary. That's all. He, he can do. He says, you don't know the power of God. And you don't know the scriptures. That's why you walk in error. That's why there's confusion in your life. That's why I say, don't even imagine how to do it. Just make up your mind. I want to live right. So help me God. That is surrender. I don't understand a lot about these things, Lord, but I agree with you anyhow. I surrender all. Show me the next step to take. Show me the next word to speak. Show me who my friends should be. Show me where I should work. Show me where I should live. The world is big. We can live anywhere we want. But it's only where you are positioned, where God wants you to be positioned, that you will flourish. Don't go to Jerusalem when God says go to Jericho. It won't work. That's why people are frustrated in life. Let us allow God to teach us so that we don't walk in error. Because when, when God says go to Jerusalem and you go to Jericho, you're walking in error. Because you don't know God's word for your life. So it makes you rebellious. Even though you might be ignorant of what you are doing. <laughs> That's why God say, says, my children perish due to what? Lack of knowledge. I'll put my word down for them. Why are, why are they still walking in error? Why can't they just look into what I've already given them? See? Lies, deception, error, and pride. We cast you out today in the name of Jesus. We will not walk in error. We will learn now rather than suffer in all eternity. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing this word to us this morning. We will learn now. And I say, if not now, then when? Tell yourself, if, if I don't catch it now, then when? Do I know my end? Do I know? I don't care whether you are old or young. Babies come into the world and die as babies. So it, there's no guarantee that you are going to live long. If you live in Christ, you, you, you are perfect anyhow. Like I just said, God is not the God of the dead. If you live in him, in him you, you, are li you are alive forever. It's unfortunate that some of us are alive forever in the wrong place because we did not want to accept Jesus, the only one that paid the price because we did not understand with our fickle mind. May God help us to understand in Jesus' name. And let us start to confess and possess now. Confess and possess. Confess and possess. If not now, then when? Tell God now is the accepted time. The time to favor your daughter Victoria is now. And because you have brought this word to me, I know not to stand around and babble here and there in my small mind. I know to take your word and to confess your word and to declare your word 
and to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Lord, just open my ear to hear. The Bible is big. It's not every word that applies every day. Some, some words apply in different situations. When you, when you are in prison, when you are locked up, there's a different kind of prayer. I say, Lord, get me out of here. When you lack money, is not, Lord, get me out of here. It's, Lord, let me overflow. You see, so God has put it down. Let's go to Psalm 103. Because we, we have allowed our angels to be redundant because we are not speaking and receiving. Speaking is receiving. Psalm 103. Today we end the Psalms. We read 102. Now it's 103. Verse 17. Oh, the time has, the time has wings today, not even legs. All right, Psalm uh, 103, verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from how far? Two years? No, everlasting to everlasting, because he doesn't live in time. He knows it all around the clock. Your clock is ticking, but his clock is there, he knows, he sees, he just wants you to speak. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. That means those who reverence him, those who acknowledge him, those who accept him. And his righteousness to children's children. So from generation to generation, when you know the Lord and you bless the Lord, he will bless you. He will bless your children and your children's children. That's why God says, whatever you know, teach it to your children. So that they will stay in that line of blessing. It's an inheritance. Verse 18, to such, to such as keep his covenant. So you, he, you do what he says. You stay in line with his plans for you. To such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to what? To do them. So you do what God says you should do. You live according to his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 19, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. I said that earlier. He is the only one who is established for, for, forever and ever, from everlasting to everlasting. So if you want to be established, step in. Just step in. Jesus has laid the foundation. Build on that. Stay on that. He has established his throne in heaven. Nobody can contest it. And his kingdom, only his kingdom rules over all other kingdoms. That is why Jesus is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. He rules over all in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Verse 20, that's where I'm going. Verse 20, speaking is receiving. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do what? His word. But you have to speak it for the angels to pick it up and do it and excel in strength. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, Psalm 103, verse 20, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding, heeding the voice of his word. If you don't speak God's word, there is no guarantee that you are going to receive what you are asking for. That's why we are teaching the Bible. I'm not here to make you jump and shout. I'm here for you to receive the seed of the word in you and let that seed germinate and grow so that your life is transformed. So that people will stop talking bad about your God. 
people call themselves Christians and you don't, they have nothing to show for it. They are still like the heathen because they are not declaring the word of God over their lives. When we speak, we empower the angels. Remember weeks ago, the topic, empowering the supernatural? You have to know which supernatural, which sight you are empowering with your word. So speak what is right. Choose to live right. Choose to speak right. Choose to think right. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we have to empower our angels to excel in strength. They can enter where you cannot enter. Remember when Herod wanted to kill Peter, locked him up? Who went into the prison and, and released Peter? An angel. Why? Because the brethren were speaking the right thing. Mm. They empowered the angel. Even when they caught you know, other disciples, threw them in prison, the angel just <laughs> flung the door open. They went out. What did they do? They went to the synagogue preaching. Did they say, oh, now we are out. Let's go and hide. No, 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 no. They were bold, confident in declaring the word, not what they, they were thinking. They were declaring the word. They were teaching in the synagogue. The angels excel in strength when we release the word of God. They, they hear the word of God and obey and do it. They heed the voice of his word, not the voice of your word. It's only by God's mercy that, that, that we are not con consumed. We read that in Lamentations last week. Just by the mercy of God, we will sit and, and cry and cry. And God will say, oh, my children, why can't they just receive straight up? So by his mercy, he gives you the sun free of charge, gives you the rain free of charge, gives you the oxygen, you know, he heals you free. And here you are, you could have got a lot more. So we have to learn to Know and say what God says because he rules over all. We have to activate the angelic by what we speak. That means we speak the word of God and they hear the word of God. The moment the angels hear the word of God, zoom, they go. On your behalf, entering where you could never enter. And that's, that's what Hebrews uh, 1.14 says. Let's just bookmark, bookmark some, some 103. Let's go to Hebrews. We have to know the word. It's only the word that works. It's only the word that works. Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Are there, that means the angels, are the angels... Not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will what? Inherit salvation. That's you and I. The angels have been sent forth on your behalf, on my behalf. But when we are not sending them forth with the word of God, we are not living in the covenant, in the commandments and plans of God, the angels just sit and say, hmm. Today, my master is not using me. I'll just stand here. Remember the parable that Jesus gave the, the master or the owner of the land in the morning? He went out, found some people standing around, sent them to work. Midday, he went. Some were still standing around, sent them to work. And on and on until even the last hour, people were still standing around. Your angels are standing around. Please send them to work. Send them to work. Every one of us in this world, whether we know it or not, we came here with an angel. God never sent you here into the world without an angel. You have an angel, I have an angel. 
from birth. From birth. That's why certain things happen to you and you were preserved and you thought it was your, your agility. Oh, I dodged that thing. I was so agile. I was so quick. I was so fast. No, it was, it was your angel that took you out of the way. Learn to acknowledge these things. Your life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. Let's do it. We have these ministering spirits sent forth to minister on our behalf so that we can inherit. Not so that we can work for our salvation. No, inherit salvation. That's what Hebrews 1.14 says. If you don't know it, you toil, you toil, you toil. Oh, how do they even do this Christian thing? Oh, it's too much for me. It has to be too much for you because you are doing it in the flesh. It's a God thing. How do you think you, are, you can do a God thing as a human being? How could Jesus have died for the world if he were a human being? You can't do a God thing in your strength. Jesus had and could only have been God to be able to suffer what he suffered and to die for the rest of the world. It's a God thing. No, no human being could have endured all that. Let us open our eyes to the truth. Forget religion. Forget tradition. Let us ask ourselves honest questions. I don't care where you were born. Share this message. Let lives be liberated. People are suffering because of tradition and religion. Jesus told the Sadducees, you are in error because you don't know the truth. <laughs> Apostle Paul used them against each other. He, when he was called up, he realized some were Pharisees, some were Sadducees. He says, my opportunity. He knocked their heads together. The Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. The Pharisees do. And, and Paul said, I'm here talking about the resurrection of the dead, which the Pharisees know, and, you know, immediately there was confusion in the enemy's camp. Know the truth. Seek the truth. Live by the truth. Speak the truth. And receive the truth. Speaking is receiving. Empower the right supernatural. Gain what you could never be able to gain in your human ability. It's a God thing. Let him come through for you. The, like I said, the disciples were, were locked up and they came out, went to the synagogue and they were preaching. Was that in their power? Of course not. If they were not empowered, they would have been timid. They would have run into holes and, 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 and hidden in the rocks. No, by this time, they were so empowered by the Holy Spirit. No more timidity. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but that of power, love, and sound mind. Because I'm seeking the truth. I want to know the truth. I want to, I'm looking for what is right. I'm seeking what is right. I'm choosing what is right. Not what I, uh, what I was happened uh, or what I happened to be born into. Let us learn to empower the right supernatural. Let us not be mistaken. And, and uh, because we don't know the word, God is bringing the word to us. First John 5 verse 14 says, this is the confidence that we have, that if we ask anything, how according to his will, has he said it, then speak it. If we ask according to his will, according to his word, according to his counsel, then of course he hears. 
And the moment we know that he hears, then we also know that we have received what we asked for. Because Jesus already died before you knew him. He died for you already. He's just waiting for you to realize that you are a prince. You are a child of God. But due to tradition and religion, you missed it. And Jesus has been waiting. Who is going to tell my people that they shouldn't live that kind of life? That they are royalties. So you start to declare, once you know these things, according to that 1 John 5, or uh, 3 John, the third epistle of John 1, and, you know, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. So epistle of John... The, the third one, chapter 1, verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, all things, all things, all things. Please note, it says all things, not some things. That is God's will for you, that you prosper in all things and be in good health as well even as your soul prospers. So Jesus has paid the price for your soul. So your soul is prospering if you walk in him. So don't just say, oh, that's the spiritual aspect. No, <laughs> everything is spiritual. Your health, your wealth, your joy, your hope, your confidence, it's all in the package. It's a full package deal, all things. So you start to declare, according to our topic of today, I prosper in all things today and always. I prosper in health today and always. I prosper in wisdom today and always, because the Bible says all things at all times. I prosper in finance today and always. I'm declaring it, I'm speaking it, and I'm receiving it. I prosper in my walk with Jesus today and always. Even as my soul prospers, even as my soul is enjoying this Christian walk with Jesus, I will enjoy every other aspect of my life equally. Equally, I will prosper in every aspect of my life. As my soul prospers, as my soul is enjoying the knowledge of God, that is how every other aspect of my life is prospering, is growing. I'm growing in wisdom. I'm growing in knowledge. I'm growing in truth. I'm growing in hope. I'm growing in faith. I'm growing in love. I'm growing in all things. In all things, I prosper. I believe it. Therefore, I speak it. Therefore, I receive it. Because speaking is receiving. The angels are hearing what I'm saying, and they are running with it. Not because I have the power to change things. The word has the power. The word works. The word of God. The angels hear what I'm saying according to the word of God. And they say, that child needs prosperity in health, in wealth, in hope, in faith, in confidence. Let's go. Let's go. Wisdom. Give it to her. Because <laughs> God said so. A child that is born into a rich house doesn't have to do anything. He's just rich. So when are you going to start to enjoy your daddy's wealth? Because it's there. You don't have to do anything about it. I really pray that we hear Christianity is not what it should be. We have messed it up, calling it religion. It should not be. It is not religion. It's a mystery. 
that you will just declare a word and it will come to pass. <laughs> because it's God's word. It has the power to be made manifest beyond your imagination. What I confess is what I possess. And so from today on, I will start to confess what is right. I will start to confess what the word of God says. I will declare that Romans 5, uh, Romans 15, verse 18 again. And I want us to receive it. And I want us to take these words and go and practice, 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 practice. That's why I say it is a, a conscious and willful participation. You, 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 you take a part, a, a, you know, an active part. You play an active part in your Christian walk, in your spiritual growth. So I'm going to amplify the amplified. <laughs> so... If you can't write it down now, go and replay it later and write it down. Use it and declare it over yourself. And so I declare over you, according to Romans 15, verse 18 and 14, may the God of hope fill you to overflowing with all forms of joy, all forms of peace, because 3 John says all, claim it all. It's not your business. You don't have to pay for it. Just take it. May the God of hope fill you. May God fill you. May God fill you. Receive your inheritance. May the God of hope fill you to overflowing. You must overflow so that you kill that spirit of lack, that lack mentality, that poverty mentality. Start to say, God, fill me to overflowing. Let the word of God work for you. It's not what you can do. Let the angels hear. This girl needs an overflow according to God's word and we have to obey the word of our master. I'm repeating it because I want somebody to get it. God wants you to get it so that you stop begging. May the God, may God himself, the God of hope, fill you to overflowing. May you start to abound in hope in God, not in what you can do. So may this God, in the name of Jesus, fill you to overflowing with all forms of joy, all forms of peace, as you believe his word, by faith, you receive what you are hearing by faith. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you abound in this hope. May this hope never disappoint you. May you abound in hope in your walk with Jesus. May you overflow with abundance of confidence. And in accepting, you must learn to accept. May you overflow with abundance of confidence and in accepting every promise that God has spoken and written down concerning your life. May you abound in hope in your Christian walk with Jesus. May you continuously overflow with the abundance of confidence. May you be confident in what you know. May you be confident on the road that you have taken. May you be confident in your choices. May, may, may Jesus be certain in your life. May you know that whatever you do in Christ is certain because you have set the Lord always before you. He is 
the, the, the common denominator. He is certain in your life. He can never disappoint you. May you overflow with the abundance of confidence. And may you learn to accept every promise that God has spoken and written down concerning you. Because he did not ask you to think it. He says, here it is. Receive it. And I pray that by the grace of God, you will receive this word today and flourish in it and abound in it and overflow in it by the power of the Holy Spirit in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And God's people say, Amen, 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 Amen. And now we want to thank God. We want to thank God as we declare, I am blessed. And like last week, I am favored. I am worthy because of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that because of you, I am blessed. So you declare, I am blessed. I am worthy. I am favored because my father says so. I'm not, it's not wishful thinking. It's not wishful thinking. The set time to favor Zion is now. So you take it now and let your life start to, to transform from today. Today and always, I declare that I abound in hope and I overflow in confidence in the name of Jesus. Not in what I can do, but in what Jesus has already done for me because of his love for me, because of his divine purpose for me. And so we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you for your perfect plan for our lives. Thank you for reminding your children that this is the set time. You want to bless them. You want to favor them, irrespective of this current situation around them. It does not matter. Today, we empower our angels and we release them to go into the world and do what we could never do for ourselves. So help me, God. We want to live right. We want the truth of God's word to be real in our lives. And so we say, thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us. Thank you, Jesus, for empowering us with your word today. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us of your perfect plans for our lives today. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us today. By faith, we receive that blessing. Just like we read last week, the, the Canaanite woman, you say, I have found, have not found such great faith in Israel. Can we just say, Lord, you told us that all we need is fed like a mustard seed. And we, we, we ask, you are our faith. Give us that faith to believe. Help us believe. Change our lives. Do something new. Because today is the set time. The set time to favor your children is now. And if not now, when? Lord, I have been waiting. If not now, when? And in his mercy, he will say, why not? If not now, when? Because we spoke his word, because we declared his word, and he's faithful to honor his word. And may God honor his word in your life today and always and forever and forever by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the spirit of the living God. May we be empowered today to receive our inheritance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we are thankful, and Jesus, thank you that you have perfect plans for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And on my clock is just 12 midday, so the set time has come. How perfect is that? 12 midday. Hallelujah. 
You see, God is perfect. You may know it, you may not know it, it doesn't matter. He is God, so just agree with him, okay? So let's not, we've heard a lot today. Let's go and build on it. Let's go and build on it. Let's say, Holy Spirit, grant me wisdom. Help me to overflow in wisdom and confidence that I may receive all that heaven has in store for me. Thy will be done here for me on earth as you have already ordained it in heaven. And may my angels be redundant no more in Jesus' name. Amen. Communion time, saints. Keep praising Jesus. He deserves all the glory. Praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. In all generations, your name will be magnified. Your name will be glorified. The name that is above all names, more powerful than we can think or imagine. Powerful in heaven, in all the heavens, powerful on earth, and powerful under the earth. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Hallelujah. Thank you that we bow willingly. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the grace to bow willingly. We are not forced to bow. Some will be forced to bow. Because you, you, you can't, can't do, you can't go around it. Thank you, Jesus. Communion time, saints. Communion time. God wants to bless us so much. We have no clue. We have no clue. We we could never understand. That's why our brains are too small. You can't you can understand God with your brain. Why would God want to die for sinful sinful people? Let us honor him. Let us honor him. Father, we thank you. We thank you for these gifts. You give seed to the sower and you give bread to the eater. So we bring these gifts to you, which you have provided, which you have caused the earth to produce for us. Even when the earth was cursed, you still gave man the power to produce because by your mercy we are not consumed. Because of your great compassion, we are not consumed. You still provide for us whether we know it or not. But today we want to know. Help us to know, Lord, that you are our provider and all that we have is in you. And so we come with a thankful heart and we bring these gifts before you. And we say, Father, thank you for sending your son, for releasing your word into the earth realm. Word of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you for agreeing to come and going through all that you had to go through. You had to learn to be a human being. Here we are learning to be God's children because of you. Sweet Holy Spirit, we thank you that you never left Jesus alone one split second and you have not left us alone one split second. Where would we be without you? Thank you for your shield. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so after Jesus gave thanks and praise to the Father, he took bread and he broke it 
and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. He was so confident. He said, this is my body, which will be given up for you. He had made up his mind to give himself up for us. So Lord Jesus, we receive you. Because you were broken, we are made whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. When supper was ended, in the same way he took the cup and gave thanks, acknowledging the Father and his manifold provision, his love, his care, his faithfulness. And then he gave the cup to his disciples, knowing what he was going to suffer. He said, take this all of you and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. He knew it ahead of time and he spoke it. This is the cup of my blood, which will be shed for you and for all men, so that sins may be forgiven, so that we don't have to live under the, the weight of sin, the, the, the conviction and condemnation, no, not conviction, the condemnation of sin. We are liberated by the blood of Jesus because he poured himself out on purpose that our sins will be may be forgiven. So Lord, we thank you and we receive you that you would do this for us sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's a mystery. It's love. It's unimaginable. And so we come with a grateful heart and we say thank. Thank you for pouring yourself from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. You, you, you poured out blood on our behalf. Every part of you was pierced and beaten and, and you suffered. Or nothing was left out. They mocked you. They laughed at you. They shamed you. They, uh, things that we wouldn't even be able to go through. You went through it for us because you are God. And so we worship you. And so we honor you. And so we praise you. And so we bless your most holy name. Thank you, Father, for sending your son. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming for us. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for maintaining us and teaching us and leading us and guiding us and revealing the power in this communion to us. To the unbelieving eye, we are eating bread and drinking wine. But I know, and the sense know, that we are eating the body of Christ and drinking his blood. And may it be done for us as we have spoken, as we have believed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. The body of Christ. The most precious blood of our Lord and Savior and King Jesus. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. To worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, we are speaking your word today, hear us, Lord, 
let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Let our words to you today be like the words of a baby that is just learning to say mama and papa. And the parents are rejoicing. It's a sweet sound in the ears of the mother to hear the child say for the first time, Mama, Papa. Lord, we honor you and we thank you. Let every word we speak from now on, as you have taught us that speaking is receiving. May we know how to speak the right word. May we consciously Speak the right word and let those words be sweet in your ears. And may the angels pick them up and run with them and enter where we could never enter and cause things to happen that we would never be able to, to accomplish in the flesh. And may they all come and may we receive them with gratitude to the glory of your name and for our benefit. Thank you for planning all these good things for us. We bless your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. What a day, saints. And we finished earlier today. You have to go and enjoy the sunshine. So a little bit of housekeeping as usual. Remember to share the word and share God's goodness in your life. Use your mouth to declare how good God is. Speaking is receiving. What I confess, what I declare is what I possess. I possess what I confess. I, I speak and I receive. We believed and therefore we spoke. And we spoke and therefore we receive. May that be our portion today in Jesus' name. Now that we know the truth, let us live by it in Jesus' name. So, remember um, the vision that's that came in 2020, we are still on it. Jesus says, call for investors. He's not making, he's not playing games. He means business with you. Do business with Jesus. God says, test me in this. <laughs> he's so sure of himself. He says, test me in this. This is my word. Try me with my word. Try me, test me in this. That's how confident he is. And may we receive that confidence as his children in Jesus' name. So, vision 2020. Jesus says, call for investors. Invest in kingdom business. Jesus says at the, said at the age of 12, don't you know I have to go about my father's business? Who is your father? Are you going about his business? Are you interested in what God is interested in? Do you love what God loves? Do you hate what God hates? Do you choose to walk with him in the path of righteousness? By choosing to live right? By finding out the truth about your life? About who you are? About why you are here on earth? You see? The information is there. Find out. So, so into the word, so into your life, so into the kingdom, just give and it shall be given to you. That's what Jesus says in Luke 6, 38. Read it for yourself. Give and it shall be given. It is in giving that we receive. Jesus says a seed that has to go down first and die before it can bear much fruit. And I said earlier, when you give, Two loaves and five fish, five fish to uh, uh, Jesus. He multiplies it. Whatever you give to Jesus is multiplied. Okay? Let's look for the truth. Let's live by the truth. Even Pilate discovered the truth. 
when he spoke to Jesus. Focus on Jesus and you will find truth. Focus on Jesus. On the website, even on YouTube, we have the links. You can PayPal Minister of the Living Jesus. The links are there or email me and I can. The email address is there as well on the website. Okay? Ministry of the Living Jesus. The, you know, the, the phone number is there. You can WhatsApp that number. 0755-123-9000. Very easy number. 0755-123-9000. Okay, if you was of that number, I can send you the details. And it's there on the website as well, Ministry of the Living Jesus. There's PayPal link there. On that PayPal link, just click the, I, would, I said last week, my technical director has not been able to look into it. Click off the last, like, question marks at the end, just paypal.com. And you, when you click it, it will take you to Ministry of the Living Jesus, okay? Let us just listen to God and do what he says, okay? Do what he says, because once you receive Jesus in your heart, the Holy Spirit is in you. That's why I say, even if you do wrong, even if your footsteps go wrong, because your heart is set on serving God, believing him, loving him, doing right by him, trust me, the Holy Spirit won't leave you. He can never let you go astray. He is faithful and just. He is so faithful, we human beings have no clue. Why would somebody die for you when you were a sinner, when you were mocking him, when you refused him? How many people in this world say they are atheists because they have no clue who God is until one day by the grace and mercy of God, somebody preaches to them, they listen, and they are like, oops, what have I been missing? Is the grace of God. We are all here by the grace of God. So let's let's learn. Let's learn when we read the word, listen. See, like today, I would have read that Psalm 102 to the end as usual, but, but the Holy Spirit just arrested me. So I had to speak about it verse by verse, which I don't normally do. That's what God wanted to do for his children today. So he did it. It's not about me. It's about him. So listen to him. As I listened and did that, he will lead you. There, there are so many times you go out of your house, you always take the road to your right. But somehow, on a particular day, you say, mm, maybe I should take the left. That's the Holy Spirit leading you. You don't know what he spared you from by not going to the usual right. Because maybe the enemy knew you always take the right He's, and he was waiting. That day, the Holy Spirit prompted you. Hey, why don't you try the left road? And he protected you. That's how God works. It's so simple for a human mind. Sometimes it, it's so so stupid. <laughs> so, because it's childlike. That's why he says, just come to me as children. Okay? I want to let you go early today. So let's remember the church is here for you. We are teaching the word. We are not trying to uh, hype you up and hype you up and you forget half. No. Bible verses. Read it. Go back and read it. Open your heart. Let God himself speak to you as well. We are all his children. So he speaks to all of us. Okay? By his word. His, the angels hear the voice of his word and they obey. So his word speaks, okay? It's the word of God, so he speaks to you in your particular situation. All right, so on that note, on Tuesday, we have the Youth Bible Study, 6 p.m. UK time, okay? 6 p.m. to 6.30, only 30 minutes, so that if you don't have a lot of time, and you just want to come in for 30 minutes, perfect time. You come. After that, the same Tuesday plus Wednesday plus Friday, we have one hour Bible study. So 
7 p.m. UK time, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, okay, for one hour Bible study. On Thursday night, 9 p.m., we have the altar of petition, the altar of prayer, the MLJ mantle. Come in 9 p.m. UK time for an hour, 9 to 10. You bring all this like we read in, in Psalm 102. Let the set time be now that you bring your groaning. God is looking onto the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner. So whatever you think you are going through is not too big for God. You didn't just present it to him properly. Okay? Release his word to him. Let the angels hear his word and act on it. It's not about us. He gets the glory. You just enjoy the benefits. The angels are happy to do it. Okay? Jesus was happy to die for you. He said, not my will, but your will. It was difficult, but he did it out of love. And once done, it's done forever. Just enjoy the benefit of being God's child. And then on Friday night, when the week is over, by 10 p.m. for another one hour, from 10 to 11, we have the fire hour of prayer. This one is to help us keep the fire on our Christian or spiritual altar burning. For God to teach you, work on you, restore you, replace. See, once you honor God, God honors you. I don't care how you do it. It's like a little child bringing something that maybe goes out with papa for a walk, finds flour and picks it. This is for mama. Just pick the flour. There. You think that when he comes, mama, this is for you. The mom will hug the child, kiss the child. There's nothing you do for God. You are his child. If you honor him, he will honor you. That's the day ice cream will come out from the freezer for that child. Even though mommy says, ice cream is not good for you. Sweet is not good for you. But that day, mommy will bring out sweet and biscuit and ice cream. You see? It's not every day the mother will give the child sweets. But on that day, she does things like that to raise that child's spirit up. God does that for us every day. We don't even know it. That's why we should live a thankful and, and grateful life to God. Oh, yeah, in God. All right. What else? I think that's it. Okay? Get in touch. If you have any question, just send WhatsApp message, send email. We, we live in the technical era, so we can communicate. All right? God bless you and keep you, and may his light perpetually shine on you. May, you. may you learn to recognize those situations where the word of God is speaking to you and you receive it and you declare it back to him. May you learn to live in that place where you declare the word and receive the blessings from that word in Jesus' name. And I release you and I bless you and I declare over you that the blood of Jesus is your refuge, that the light of the Holy Spirit is your shield, and the love of the Father is a permanent firewall, blazing firewall of protection around you. The enemy cannot even dare to come here. We are blessed because we are worthy children of God. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Go in the love of the Lord and give love to even your enemies. Don't bother. They are not your enemies. They are just confused. God bless you. See you next time. Bye. Mwah.